In this video, we'll look at how to use the Anycubic Resin Exposure Rangefinder Test, or RERF. This is the feature that comes standard on all Anycubic resin printers, which allows you to print eight versions of the same model at different exposures so that you can dial in the settings for your preferred resin. Other 3D printing reviewers have talked about this already, but the key thing I want to show in this video is how to use your own model as the test model and how to set it up in the Anycubic Photon Workshop Slicer so that you know which of the models is being exposed at each exposure setting without getting confused about which is which. This is the explanation of the RERF test that you find in the user guide for the Mono X 6KS. You can see that each of these exposures differs by 0.25 seconds, starting at the normal exposure for number one. You can set this to whatever time you want, and then the exposure for each of the remaining models is increased by 0.25 seconds. This is what the RERF looks like when it comes off the Mono X 6KS printer. It uses the standard model supplied by Anycubic. If you look at it like this, you can identify which is which if you know how they are arranged on the build plate. And when they're washed and cured, there's a tiny number on each one so that you can work out the exposure for each model. And that's helpful because they'll get jumbled up when you wash them. Now, that's fine if you want to use this model as your exposure test. But I found this model to be a bit too complex for my needs. I don't print miniatures with intricate details. In fact, the detail I'm looking for is sharp lines and clean smooth surfaces. I found the resin validation model by Photonsters to be a simple test that lets me see the detail I need and quickly. Being a flat model, this prints in about 10 minutes. For this example, I'm also using the Anycubic Photon Workshop Slicer, which I found to be more than good enough for my printing needs. So here's the file. But how do I put it on the build plate to make sure it's going to be in the right location for each exposure? And because it's not labeled, how do I know which is which after I pull them off the build plate and then randomly throw them into the wash station? Well, firstly, I've modified this model by placing a number on it that's big and easy to read. So let's quickly remove this unlabeled one. I therefore need eight copies of this model, each with its own number from one to eight. I've used Shaper 3D to quickly add a number to the model, but Photon Workshop has recently been updated with significantly improved features for adding text. So be sure to check that out. Then I need to locate these models in the slicer so that they line up with the corresponding location on the screen when they are exposed. And this is where it can get confusing, but there is a simple solution. Even though this test is available on all Anycubic printers, I recently found out that not all Anycubic printers run the test the same way. And after doing a bunch of RERF tests across the three Anycubic printers I use, I realized this the hard way as things got mixed up. And then I realized that my previous tutorial about this feature was misleading and well, actually incorrect. So let me just quickly appear on camera here and say that if you saw my last tutorial and you got confused because it wasn't working for you, um, that's my bad and I'm sorry about that. It's only when diving deep into this quirk in Anycubic printers that I discovered this method, which ensures a correct result. It's actually quite simple and the answer is in the user manual. Open up the user manual for your printer and find the section that explains the RERF test. Look for this image, which shows how the test model is arranged during the print. This one is for the Mono X 6KS. Now look at this one for the M7 Pro printer. Notice how the order of the numbers is reversed. Likewise on this Photon D2 printer. And if you look at this footage of the Mono X 6KS and the Photon D2 running the RERF test side by side, you can indeed see that the exposures are reversed and the D2 also lights up the exposures differently. That's why you need to check this specifically for your Anycubic printer. The trick is, you just need to arrange your models in the slicer so that when you preview the print in the slicer, the numbers are in the same arrangement as they are in the manual. The print preview needs to match the order of models shown in the user manual. It's that simple. This slicer has a red and green line indicating the X and Y axes. And I find that if you get the alignment relatively even using these lines as a guide, it works every time. But what if your print bed isn't big enough for a model like this? Well, I've got this set up for the M5S Pro printer, which gives me a large enough build area, but I use an Anycubic Mono X 6KS printer. It's got a slightly smaller build area, so I simply use the free cut feature and slice a bit off the end of the model. That way I can fit the eight models easily onto the build plate. I've made sure that the number on the model isn't sliced off when I do this. And I get to retain the part of the Photonsters test that I find the most useful. And that's being able to count the holes and posts to get an even exposure and these little details here. Now, when you preview the print, you might not immediately see the numbers. 
so you need to use this slider to see the individual print layers. As you move down, the numbers will become visible. Then, make sure the numbers are in the same arrangement as they are in the manual. Once you've got this right, you can slice the file. When you save your slice file, you need to make sure you give it the name that the printer is expecting, otherwise it won't work. That file name format is R underscore E underscore R underscore F. The slicer will then add the file name suffix that's appropriate for your printer. Make sure you get that right. You can now use this file as your RERF and it will print your own model. And by the way, check this out, look at this detail. That's using a MonoX 6KS printer that has an XY resolution of 34 microns. Incredible detail for a printer with a 9 inch screen for under 250 US dollars. And the resin in this test is the Anycubic Eco resin. It's a fairly ordinary resin which prints with great detail. So just to quickly recap, the Anycubic RERF test is super useful for dialing in resin settings. But the Anycubic printers don't all arrange the test model in the same way. Check the user manual first, and then match this up to the print preview in your slicer, and you should be good to go. Let me know if that method works for you. If you found it helpful, then please leave a comment, hit the like button, and consider subscribing. And once again, I'm really sorry if you saw my previous tutorial and got confused. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.